Right, number one, how are you? I'm good, thanks, yeah. I'm in high spirits. Um, looking forward to an exciting game, obviously, tomorrow at Manchester City, and life is good. Are you really looking forward to Manchester City and all that some of their players can throw at you? Yeah, they're obviously good games to play in. The, the Premier League's full of teams that have got great players, and it's just the, the, the biggest draw for everybody. People come from different countries to play in these games, and I'm no different. I've grown up watching the Premier League, and it's great to be able to play in these games. And coming in with an injury to, to one of your teammates, does that cloud things a little? Yeah, it's obviously not nice. Obviously, we're a, a close, close knit squad. Really, everybody gets on. You know, it's one of the strengths of the club. Really, we've had a. Um, it's been the same ever since I've been here. Really, so um, obviously, it's disappointing for Ben. There's a few of the other lads who have got slight niggles and injuries who have been playing and, uh, and getting through it for the for the team. So it's, it's it's unfortunate for Ben that he's not able to do that at the minute. But it's your opportunity, and you want to grab it with both hands. Yeah, obviously that's what I'm paid to be here for. Uh, I'm here to play when Ben can't uh, and I, I'll just obviously do my best as I always do to, to give a good account of myself. And when you've come in for the cup games and then you came off the bench at the weekend, you know that you can perform, don't you? Yeah, I'm obviously I've played uh, a reasonable amount of games at Premier League level. Um, it's exciting league to play in. Um, and like, like we said before, it's uh, Man City. It's, it doesn't come much more exciting to turn up there and obviously try and, try and get a win. But as being a number two, but goalkeepers are very single-minded. You all, I think, think you should be number one. What is it like being number two when you want to be number one? It's tough. Obviously, there's large parts of the seasons go by where you don't do a lot. Um, but obviously, it's, it's up to you to keep yourself ready to play because as has happened now, things can change in, a, in an instant. Um, I've never come on in a game before. I've played, obviously, in international friendlies where you know you're going to come on at half-time and, and things like that. But... Um, I've never actually come on in a Premier League game here, so it was a, it was a, a new experience. Really, it was it was exciting. Now, tell me about Tony Pulis. What what's it been like, and what has been his effect as an insider working alongside him? Um, I mean, he's, he's he's tidied up a lot of a lot of little details that have made a big difference to the football club. I mean, we've our defensive record, Touchwood, has been very good since he's took over, uh, and that's given us a solid foundation really to to get points and, and good results. And the people he's brought in with him as well, because it's all changed, all changed with goalkeeping coaches as well. What's that like? Yeah, it's, that's football. Um, I'm obviously not a young pup anymore. I've worked under a lot of different people and you just have to get on with finding what works for you in, under the, the different structures that work. And we're all enjoying it, really. Uh, I think that, like you said, like I said before, we've, we've got some good results and, and that helps you to, to kind of buy into what's happening and, uh, and keep pushing on together. Um, right, Manchester City, they are out of Europe, do you think that you're going to see a wounded animal or what sort of a team do you think you're Yeah, it's dangerous really. Um, like I say, they'll have obviously physically invested a lot in that game. Emotionally, it would have been hard for them as well. Um, but like I say, um, that they know where they are now. I listened to Joe Hart and James Milner after the game and they said that they know exactly what they've got to shoot for now for the rest of the season and that's obviously their priority is the league now. So it's, that, it's obviously a very, very dangerous game for us. Um, it's a tough place to go anyway, so we, we, we know we're going to have to be at our, best, at our best to get a result there. And when you're a keeper looking at another keeper, Joe Hart, his performance the other night and you know other performances, what sort of a, a man will be in the opposite end to you? I would imagine he'll be feeling very confident. Um, I really enjoyed watching him play. I always like watching Joe play because he's got a great attitude to goalkeeping. Uh, he has an unbelievable self-belief, which will only have been heightened by the way he played the other night, and that's, that's fair play to him because he's had a lot of... A lot of people have been taking snipes at him and, telling, and saying he's not this and he's not that, but he's showed again, time and time again for me, what a top keeper he is. Some keepers at clubs I've spoken to say that there are certain players who just annoy the hell out of them because all they do is say, just stay out here, I want to have a practice yeah. and a free kick. Sido, so that's Sido in, an, in a nutshell. Every day, when, even when the manager's sending everyone in, he's kind of sneaking off, grabbing bags of balls, trying to say, can we do this, can we do that? And yeah, he, he's always a battle, to be honest. But, I mean, it's all credit to him. He wants to improve, he wants to get better. Uh, and it is a massive strength of his anyway, his finishing. is is probably the best part of his game. So, um, he's obviously he's, he's keen to make his strengths stronger, if that makes any sense. Now, I'm not saying you're, you're getting on, but you're not as young as you were when you started out. Has your game changed? Has your expectations changed? Have, you just get a lot more relaxed. I remember speaking to someone about this when I was younger and you do relax, you mellow, you feel more com comfortable in what you can do and what you can't do. You, you kind of, you reach a level where you know your game uh, and like I say, I think I'm at that level now and um, it's not like you think that 
you've got to change yourself. I think that it just comes with experience and with age, with the amount of games that I've played. You, you just you know where you are. You know what you can do, what you can't do. Uh, and like I said before, with, with uh, inside the structure of the club now, with the new management, you just try and pick pick bits off people to to make yourself best prepared for the games within what what you're capable of. And now, having been there, seen it, done it for a few seasons this year, do you feel as though you're in a relegation battle or do you feel as though you're now pushing out of that? Um, we're one of those clubs. I mean, the top five or six clubs are what they are. They can do, uh, they can finish in a different order most years. It's changed from time to time. Southampton look like they might finish up there this year. Um, Swansea are another team who have consistently done well. But I think everybody else, your first priority in this league is to get enough points so you're in the league the next year and then you, you take stock when you get to that level uh, and then you push on from there. I mean, you would have to ask the manager what, what he thinks we're capable of this season. Um, we're, we're obviously going to need more points for survival. I don't know how many that will be, but um, we'll, we'll keep fighting to get them and then when we do get to whatever points people think that we're, we're safe, then we'll look on from there. OK, you lost the, the Villa game, but you've been doing all right until then and then you had that nice win at the weekend. Is there any sense that complacency could set in now that you've pushed away a little? No, we're not. Um, I think, like I say, we've, we've got a lot of players who have played a lot of football at this level now, uh, at this kind of level where you know that you need to get a certain po amount of points to stay in the league and I don't think that the, the character of the group is to be complacent. Obviously the, the rewards for staying in the division are massive for the club, for the players, for everyone. You get your status to be a Premier League player so that's what we're all here for. We all want to be playing in the Premier League next year. Uh, and like I say, complacency doesn't help you get towards that. That will take you away from where you want to be. So we're obviously focused on getting enough points to be in the league next year. Fabulous. Now, tell me your name. It's not a name. I've never interviewed a Boaz before. And number yeah. one, how do you pronounce it? Boaz. It is. Boaz. Lovely. And where is it from and how did you acquire it? Um, it's a long story, really. My name's actually Glyn. Um, my mum and dad did a lot of travelling when they were younger, when they first got married, and they met a, a young boy in Israel called Boaz, um, and they wanted to call me Boaz. Uh, and then we were on a family holiday. They lived in America, my auntie and uncle came over on a family holiday, and they were saying, when I was actually born, uh, they were saying, oh, I'm, we're going to call him Boaz. And they said, you can't call him Boaz, it's horrible, he'll get bullied and all sorts. So uh, they ended up calling me Glyn, but they've always wanted to call me Boaz. So in school, I was always Boaz. Here, I'm always Boaz. Until I have to sign something, then I'm Glyn. And um, yeah, it's, it's just one of them things. It's uh, a bit of a, my dad gets sad when he talks, but it's a bit of a sensitive subject with my dad, to be honest.